Okay, in this second session, welcome back. We're going to be doing um, the other kind of big shapes. I'm going to do my road, this little pond, the branches and trees in the front, and the clouds. Again, we're doing fauvism, big, bright, vibrant colors. And again, it's how those colors play off of one another. How they make, you know, like in this picture here by Wolf Kahn, how he's got this pink and the blue and the yellow and the green kind of all playing off of each other and becoming even more vibrant in the way that he's painted them rather than the traditional paintings that we looked at that were kind of colorless and where the shadows were um, black. You know, we're making big, bright, vibrant colors. So I'm going to start with um, the ground here. I'm going to do this, this road. I'm going to use some bright orange and some pink, sorry, not pink, magenta, and add those two together to make my road. Um, here's my white again. And I'm going to be using some of the um, uh, green and the green to, to make green to make the uh, trees here. And I'm going to be using a little bit of um, white. And I quite haven't decided yet what I'm going to do with those clouds yet. But I am going to need some blue in a little bit to do my pond and my um, trees in the front. Um, I'm also probably going to have some red. So I got to like, might have, have to change out my palette here as I go. But the idea again, bright, vibrant colors. Make sure that you've got a clear foreground, middle ground, background. Okay, we're going to work on a little bit of color blending as we go in here too. So to get started, I'm going to get some white and work with this orange and add a little bit of pink into it to get my road. So I've got kind of a pinkish, orangish road. Um, and you can kind of see that color coming through. Yeah, that's what I want. Kind of like a light pinkish orange. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this in. Um, and as I have this base color here that I'm working with, I'm going to blend colors over the top. Now somewhere on your self-evaluation, it's going to ask you, did you blend colors in one or two parts of your picture? That's what we're looking for um, in this part or any other part, is I want to see that you can take two colors and blend them together. So what I mean by blending is I mean you've got a base color you're working with. That's the color that I've mixed on my palette right here. All right, this color that I've mixed on my palette. Um, and you can, while the paint is still wet, okay, while this paint is still wet, you can take a second color and blend it into that color. So for example, if I start to do that right now, let me just finish getting this area painted in. Um, I'm going to go all the way back here and get this road fixed up here. Okay, so there's my road off into the horizon. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some orange, okay, pure orange on there, and I'm just going to work it back and forth in here. And notice as I work it back and forth, that side of the road becomes a little more on the orange side of life. Okay, now, after a while, someone will walk in and say, oh yeah, that looks a little different, but they'll never know that I took that paint and actually smeared it in. If I go back and I take some of my magenta now, and I do the same thing, right up here, It's going to change the look of that part of my picture. Okay, and that brings the chroma or the color saturation of the picture right there. And it's going to kind of lead the eye right up there. And if I take some more orange and I do the same thing right up in here and kind of blend that in, I'm doing the color mixing right on my paper. Okay, everything we've done before, whether it was second grade, first grade, third grade, whatever even on our color mixing charts when we did our color mixing. We mixed everything onto our palette. Now I'm asking you to not only mix on your palette, but also start thoughtfully mixing right on your paper. And that's going to give you um, the look of a real, you know, like kind of oil painting style of mixing right on your painting and kind of um, enhancing and changing the paint as you're actually working. So there we go. There's my road. 
And notice how it's very bright, vibrant, and this pink magenta color is vibrating off this yellowish green here. Um, now I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna work on these trees. Notice I'm getting this bright chroma of, um, of green in here, and I'm trying to still decide what I wanna do um, as far as my, um, my color mixing goes. I know that I want these trees to be bright and vibrant, I want them to stand out a lot because they're kind of like one of my main subjects. But I'm putting them on a green field, right? Which is gonna give me problems one way or the other. And so how am I gonna make those stand out? I want a big, bright, vibrant color shift right next to them, right around them. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take some very light blue and I'm gonna put it right next to this green um, to kind of make those shapes pop. So here we go, I'm just gonna finish these last um, tree shapes. And notice how I'm kind of improvising, if you will. I'm changing the shapes of my trees just ever so slightly. I'm not exactly following the drawing that was there. I'm just changing them ever so slightly. I'm gonna make that tree a little bit bigger, a little more rounder. Um, so there we go. Now I'm gonna take some blue um, actually, I'm going to take some turquoise. Just kidding. I'm going to take some turquoise. I'm going to add some white to it to make a very light blue. A bluish, a very light bluish green. And I'm going to take that light bluish green and paint it through my trees. And that's going to give me a little bit of a difference on those trees and actually that's not doing quite what I wanted it to maybe I'll use a real blue the real blue is gonna get me what I want I think there we go yeah that's what I want I want it to be a little warmer not so cool a little better if I take pure blue That'll do it too. And now this is, I'm again blending right on my paper, right? I, I've hardly mixed this tree color and I'm blending it and putting it right onto my paper. I'm even painting this tree in, in the back. Paint, painted the whole thing in with that blue. Okay, and part of this is maybe I'll have to wait till this is dry a little bit and then go back with that warmer color and that might get me what I want to. Um, this isn't quite exactly how I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be brighter and more vibrant, but this is gonna have to do for now until I go back and let that area dry. So that's gonna be part of our overlapping color section. And I'm gonna go back right now and um, get these clouds done in. Now the clouds, um, notice I, uh, sorry, going back, notice on these trees that I didn't do the um, the branch, the, the trunks down at the bottom. I um, just kind of left those because that's kind of a detail thing. It's not a big shape, it's more of a detail thing. And so I wanna make sure that I get that stuff done, but at the same time, um, I don't get too carried away into the details. Details are gonna come later. So here we go for the sky on the clouds. Um, I again, I wanna get a little bit of um, white and um, I think I'm gonna actually make my clouds like a green, a greenish turquoisey color. That's gonna kinda look nice, gonna kind of um, harmonize off that pink sky let's check out and see how that looks oh yeah that's just what i want this kind of light pastel -y green um in here so i'm gonna take this pastel green gonna need a little bit more white i think um a little pastel green here bluish pastel green and um, paint that in for my clouds
And again, trying to keep my colors very bright and vibrant and not have them get dull by adding a lot of many colors together, but have them be bright and vibrant um, against each other. So I'm, I'm contrasting my colors against each other rather than mixing a bunch of colors together. Now right here where I have these two clouds overlapping, I'm going to get a little bit more blue and overlap it so this one in the back is a little bit darker. Okay, so there we go. That one in the back is almost a little bit more blue and you can kind of see the difference between those two clouds. Continuing on, I have a cloud right here that was like right in front of my mountain and I have a cloud right here that was right kind of farther down in front of my mountain. Alright, now I'm going to work on the um, the uh, pond right here and that pond I'm going to make very similar in the fact that it's going to be this bluish color, like, like this turquoise color and I'm going to have to lay that turquoise color on first all right, and then I'm going to have to go back later with a pink um, to kind of mimic this sky. But I do want my my water here to be bright and vibrant, but I don't want it to be so bright and vibrant um, and kind of crazy that people can't tell it's a pond. Okay, so I've got this kind of pond here. And um, We'll, we'll try to make that look more like a pond in a little bit with some more details. But for the, for the most part, I want that pond kind of there being the bluish color of water. But at the same time, I'm going to add some pink on top of it to kind of have a reflection um, later. The last part here is my trees. On my trees, I'm going to have the, the, the trees be this, this blue and I'm actually going to um, take some red and go right over the top of that with some warm red um, as I go. So I'm just going to take this blue and paint these trees on blue. And now, you know, in our minds, we would never think, oh, let's paint blue trees. But um, the Fauvists did paint their trees blue and red and purple and all sorts of different colors um, and they did it in a in a sense that uh, you could still tell they were trees that wasn't the problem but they uh, really stood out as different and uh, they had a different emotion a different mood than say just a regular brown tree and future artists learn from that in the essence of saying well I can do a lot of different things I can paint a lot of different colors as long as my trees look like trees um, and they follow kind of some of those landscape conventions that we talked about people are going to be able to tell that it's a tree whether it's blue or red or something else um, so moving on here I'm almost done with my tree branches There we go. So there's my big trees in the front, and they're that bluish color. So um, that kind of concludes the middle ground, or those smaller shapes. Um, I still haven't dealt with the houses in the background, but we'll get to that when we do um, kind of our detail session. So there you go. You can see big, bright, vibrant colors. You can still see the foreground. You can still see the middle ground, and you can still see the background far away. Um, now we're going to move on into the more detailed parts of our painting. But at this point, your big main shapes should be filled and you shouldn't see any white of the paper left. I've got some little bitty spots here on my houses and a little bitty spot right there where I have the sun setting. But other than that, you know, my painting is full. My paper is all painted and that's what we want. This is the end of like the second or third day of our painting unit and the whole paper should be filled with your bright, vibrant Fauvism colors and you should have a clear foreground, a clear middle ground, and a clear background. Okay, so that concludes this session.